computer. Right, so that's recording now, isn't it? So welcome to the WordPress Portsmouth Meetup. This meetup today is about WordPress and artificial intelligence, and I, Herb Miller, also known as Bobby Wide, will be uh, leading us through it. I'll hopefully talk for not too long, going through 32 quick slides, and then we'll dig into this website that I've created, which uh, looks at uh, WordPress plugins and artificial intelligence and what they can do. And anybody who's got experience of each of these different plugins, more experience than I have, is invited to give us your opinions about them. So here we go. And here we go. Here's my wife just entering. She wants to learn about it too. Susan, hello. Hi. We thank Susan for um, providing the Zoom call with you. The camera's here. Okay. Um, right, so many years ago, we had real sponsors of our meetups, Red IT and 34SP. And if you want to get a discount from their hosting, you can go to their websites and fill in the appropriate uh, stuff. So if you say that word up at Red IT, you get 25% off forever. And if you say WP Pompey at 34SP, you get a free trial. Here we're being recorded. So today is about WordPress and artificial intelligence. And if you want to see the contents of this this particular slide, then you go to wpsecrets.co.uk slash presentation, and there it is, and I'm looking at my laptop. And so what it says is, is the table of contents. I will be telling you about myself a bit and some stuff that was written by artificial intelligence about me. And then there's a slides page. Um, what is artificial intelligence? What can we use it for today? A list of some popular AI tools, WordPress and AI by ChatGPT. So this presentation as written by ChatGPT, um, the list of which plugins to look at, terms and conditions for using artificial intelligence, what intelligence is AI missing, how much is it going to cost, and then some stuff on trying to generate images with DALI 3, uh, legal implications of using AI tools, some AI tools for developers, and finally, the top 10 recommendations for using AI today. So about, if you were to visit the presentation about page, you will see this image and you will see what this presentation is about, which is what we just said, what can I use AI for to today? And I listed about 15 different things I thought these different plugins can try to do, such as generate images, generate content, um, generate excerpts, create custom CSS, custom code. And then there's some more advanced things, uh, A-B testing. Um, there's the standard stuff, implementing chatbots. And then there's uh, other bits like enhanced search. So that's what we can use AI for today. And if you were to visit the website, you will see, there's people to let in, uh, Andrew, you will see uh, a series of categories of posts which are in that particular category of the particular functionality that I said we can do. So the question is, how much is it going to cost? Each one of the different plugins and things I've looked at, I've looked at the cost of them to use the free version and the cost if you have to pay for a premium version, which a lot of plugins seem to like, providing premium versions to give you a slightly bit, bit more feature. Uh, on the website contents... Did you uh, ask me to let someone in? I'll uh, let them in. Oh. Okay. Here. Hello. And on the contents, if you look, when you look at the website on certain pages, you'll see some bits which are, have a white background and a little rounded border. And that's where I've put in a prompt to AI to say, please can I do this? And then there's a something with a white background, which has got a square border, which is the response from AI. And in some cases, I've even got a response, which is a, a revised prompt, where if you ask for an image to be generated, you type in, this is what I want the image to be. It comes back and says, well, this is what I'm going to do for you. And it gives you a revised prompt. 
So those are all um, shown with the borders around them. And if you hover over any of the featured images, you will find the, the prompt that I used to generate the image and the revised prompt that came back and what tool I used to generate it. So that's about move on. So about me, I um I asked uh, Google Bard, Chat GPT, Deep AI, and Bing to write a short biography about me, and it, it, they wrote something. And I'm not going to read it out to you, but it's all it's, um, some of it's right, and some of it's invented, and that's what AI does. It has hallucinations. It makes things up. It doesn't know them. So that's what you'll see if you go and visit the About Me page. I also asked it to generate an image for me based on a, a biography that I put on another website. And this is one of the pictures that it generated for me. As you can see, um, when it generates images, it's not very good at spelling. Um, I don't know which one's supposed to be me and which ones were supposed to be my cat. But at least it got my name right at the top, which isn't bad, is it? So when you get to the slides page on this presentation, you go recursive and you're going to get to see the slides, which I'm currently showing you. Um, and they're just about the latest version that we're looking at. There is a few problems when I tried to save them and they ended up going to one, whatever it is. What's it called? OneDrive. Mm. So what is artificial intelligence? And if we go and visit that particular page, we can find out what AI is. Now, I didn't answer it myself. Of course, I asked artificial intelligence, what is AI? And it came back with, or did I get this from Wikipedia? AI is the intelligence of machines or software as opposed to the intelligence of humans or animals. It is a field of study in computer science that develops and studies intelligent machines. Such machines may be called AIs. And then I said, well, give me a list of some terms. And it came up with AI, machine learning, chatbot, prompt, etc. And a chatbot is something like ChatGPT, which how many people have used that? What view? How many people have paid to use ChatGPT? Good. And a prompt is the thing you type into ChatGPT to make it produce something. So a simple example of a prompt is you type in funny and it comes back, back with a very short joke. Uh, the most recent one was, why don't scientists trust atoms? And the reply, and it, and then it gave you the reply, uh, because they make up everything. Now there's... Um, AI, artificial intelligence, and AGI, which is artificial general intelligence. And I think what happens mostly with these WordPress plugins we're using is they're relying on artificial general intelligence to, uh, to reply to us. And they use GPT, which stands for Generative Pre-Training Transformer. There you go. Uh, if you want to find out more about AI and artificial intelligence arts, then the best place to go is Wikipedia. So what can I use AI for today? And if we go to visit that page, we will see the different categories that I have currently documented, which is, which are the ones I mentioned. And you'll see how many different posts I've written about it. So in bulk content generation, you'll find eight different posts, uh, some of which are to do with the plugins themselves. And the other ones are actually examples of bulk content being generated. So that's where you say um, to WordPress, uh, I want, want to write these posts. Here's the titles. Off you go and write them for me. And it, off it goes to AI and says, write this post. And it comes up with as much rubbish as you expect it to. There you go. How to visit that site. Now, what are the popular tools that you want to use in AI? Because you don't have to do things inside WordPress. You can quite easily do them outside. And here is a list 
which is tabulated on that page of the different tools. So OpenAI are the people that provide chat GPT and a thing called DALI, which is for image generation. And uh, you sign up to OpenAI and uh, get yourself an API key, and then you can use that in the plugins that you're using to, to make them work. And you pay a certain amount of money per request that you perform. Um, but if you use Google Bard or Adobe Firefly or being a Microsoft Copilot and Image Creator, each of those different things are available for free, so long as you don't overuse them. Um, so if you use Adobe Firefly Image Generator, then you only get um, about 30 goes per month before it runs out. Um, but um, of course, I used more than one user ID to do it, so I've got a bit further than that. And there's another one called uh, Meta AI, which is from Facebook, but it's not available in the UK yet. Um, I'm not going to go through this presentation by what by written by chat GPT, but that was the first thing I asked it to do back in September. I said, can you write a presentation about it? And it it provided me with some answers. And I said, well, there's no detail in that. So it wrote me some more stuff. And I said, well, that's rubbish. Can you make it a bit easier again? And, and then it just took out the other slides. But I actually created the whole presentation and in three different versions on there. So if you go and visit that, that link, you can see the whole presentation that it wrote. What I like about this picture is there's some um, baby robots. I don't know how baby robots grow up. Yeah. So which plugins are we going to look at? And I've listed 20, I've looked at 21 so far, and they were the top 10 plugins by the total downloads. And then I asked for five randomly chosen plugins. I said to AI, give us five random numbers, and it did. So I picked those ones and then discovered that two were in languages I don't understand, and plugins recommended by other people. And I chose this particular picture because I like the way the magnifying glass doesn't actually sort of have any glass in it, and it's not, it's fallen to bits. What are those plugins, you ask? Well, we'll get to see them in a minute. Terms and conditions of artificial intelligence, if you go start using them, some of them, for example, uh, Elementor, it will tell you about the terms and conditions of the things you can and cannot use it for. So uh, image generation nowadays, you can't use it to generate, what did you try to use, Andrew? Uh, Donald Trump as Jesus Christ because it doesn't allow you to produce images of particular people. Um, it doesn't like some things where it thinks it's going to be a dangerous thing to produce. So I want it to produce a space battle. He said, I can't do that. So I said, space battleships. And it was quite happy to show me a picture of space battleships blowing each other up. I don't know what was wrong with the space battle, but there you go. And if you go to other different sites, you'll find they have terms and conditions for using them basically the same as um, our meetup code of conduct don't be naughty or if you try to be if if you try to be naughty you might get told off <clears throat> now we know that artificial intelligence can do certain things like it can appear to talk to you and so on but what can't it do and these are the six different things that it told me that it couldn't do it couldn't do emotional intelligence creative intelligence, social, didn't have any intuition, it's not self-aware or conscious, and it can't do general intelligence. And of course, it can't spell, especially when it's printing pictures. So how much is it going to cost? Well, if you go and visit that page, presentation, how much is it going to cost? You will find how much it costs to use OpenAI and ChatGPT and DALI. And you will find out how much it costs to use each of the different plugins and also how much I've spent so far in the last few months trying to do it. And the answer is I wasted $18 on DALI 2, um, but I've, I know I've probably wasted quite a lot generating all these images, but it's only cost me about 30 quid so far. 
which isn't too bad over five months, is it? How much I could have paid for some of the plugins is, is unbelievable. Now, a number of people, uh, Olga and Paul Thompson, who's not here, said they had difficulty creating images that are consistent, that they can use in different ways. And the great thing about it is you can you don't have to type anything in if you want to create an image and and AI will come up with something for you. I wanted to have a picture of a Sue Brave, but I also wanted to have a picture which was uh, using a star called Fractal or something or another. So this is the first image that it came up with. Then I tried to find out why I did that. And I went and generated some more images and I got several different images, all quite different. So then I tried to say, well, what are the tricks to get the unique images? Um, so that, well, no, non-unique images, so they all look the same. And there are some people who have achieved some consistency, but I haven't done it yet. So uh, my quote from that experience was, a modification of something that's normally attributed to Albert Einstein, who said insanity is doing the same thing over again and expecting different results. And I've just modified that slightly. Is insanity is caused by doing the same thing over again with AI and not expecting different results. So if anyone does know how to create images so that they're the same each time or the same sort of style each time and you and you can therefore create images for your book please let us know now steve davies asked this question what are the uh, legal implications of using ai if it makes an illegal suggestion so um i asked that question to ai and it came back with some answers and you can see his those answers on that particular page now, if you happen to be a developer, you might want to use some tools to help you write your code. And you could use GitHub Code Copilot or Code WP or Docsbot AI, or you could just use Chat GPT 3.5 and 4 and give it some questions. Say you're writing some code and it comes up with the answers. And that's what I have done a few times, and you'll find blog posts about that in that in the site. And after four months of playing about with web, with WordPress and AI, I've come up with some conclusions. We um, you shouldn't waste money on AI. We don't need to. If you're going to use AI, start with the free tools such as ChatGPT and get used to doing things with artificial intelligence. And that getting used to means learning to write your prompts. And you can even write prompts to modify existing content as well as creating new content. I don't think it's a good idea to implement an AI powered chatbot on the front end of your website because it would just use up money. But uh, people will see. I don't think you should waste money on SEO AI, especially if you don't use your SEO analytics plugins. And I've discovered that I don't actually have any idea what I'm, what I'm doing when I use my SEO plugins. I think you should consider implementing enhanced AI search on sites with a lot of content. And I've, I've done that by using a thing called embedding. And we'll see, see us from that. Um, you can use AI tools to enhance your content, but you should check everything that it generates. Now, on the website, every single excerpt that's written was written by AI, and I haven't checked it. So you can have a look at it and think that doesn't match what he said. In the, the main content or not. And similarly for the post meta descriptions and SEO focus key phrases. Recommendation is that if anyone who visits your website should know how your site uses AI and hopefully I've achieved that on that website. But most importantly, if you're going to do anything with AI, have some fun. So that's my talk. I hope you've all got something out of that, but let's go now visit the website and um, see if we can actually look at some of the things I said we were going to, I was going to look at. Oh, but first, answer to this month's questions. And this is some of the answers to people's questions, to my questions. What's the most interesting use you've ever made of an AI tool? And did you get the answer you're hoping for? And people have generated database queries, and I've done that. Uh, Olga's had trouble creating images, and so has Paul. Um, 
an introduction to writing. I don't know what teammate means. Driving, that was a good one. I don't know what don't know what that answer about. Identifying sharks, that's a great one. Um, generating images, a lot of things, and fixing Windows problems and debugging code as well. I've not done any debugging of any problems or Windows problems. So anyone who wants to tell us about their marvelous things that they've used AI for, great. We'll have a nice chat. So that's it. So let's go to the website. Just go and bite this out. So here's the sitemap. Down the left hand side, you'll see the, each of the different plugins that I've looked at. Here's the structure of the presentation that we went through just now. Um, here we can see all of the different posts I've written. And here is the excerpt that was written by AI. And here is the meta description. So because it was written by AI and I told it to produce something which is no longer than 50 words, I wasn't surprised when it came up with something which is longer. And when I asked it to produce a meta description, 156 characters, what you're allowed, I asked it to produce it no more than 130, and, and it's sometimes gone a bit over the top. Um, so go to the home page, and here are the plugins. So this first plugin, AI Engine, is the most popular at the moment of the AI plugins in terms of downloads, and it's received over 1.5 million downloads, which is quite a lot since most don't get more than about, they've never even reached 100,000. And the things it can do is bulk content generation. It can generate content excerpts, images, SEO stuff, WooCommerce products, implement chatbots, and convert speech to text. So if we have a look at speech to text, these are the different things where I've produced stuff about speech to text. And AI Engine did this one for me. Uh, so listen to my recording. This is a test of AI Engine's transcription function transcribing audio from audio to text. Did you hear that? No, it was a bit struggle. Yes? No? Yeah, we can hear it. Well, it, it did exactly what I said, which wasn't bad. Nine seconds is tough. And you just have to sort of give it the recording and off it goes. Another plugin, AI Power, I asked it to do the same thing. And it was able to do it by me actually just recording straight into the computer, which is interesting. Is this the right one? This is a test of AI Engine's transcription function transcribing audio from audio to text. Well, that did that one, and then I asked it again, and this time I'd spoke it in there, and it came up with the AI Powers version of it, which is great. That's AI Engine. Uh, um, it, if you were to pay for a pro version, it would cost you $49 a year, and you can go and find out what it can do by clicking on that pricing link there. AI Engine uses OpenAI and DALI. So uh, what do we need to know about OpenAI and DALI? Opera AI tools. OpenAI is the thing that produces, provides ChatGPT and DALI. But if you use ChatGPT4, you can get DALI 3, which is better than, much, much better than DALI 2. And you go to OpenAI and you register, and then you can get API keys. And then you can see a set of the API keys that I have used on different for different plugins. So AI Engine, Classif AI, and so on. And also my own tool, which I call my a what I call it? My API, my AI tool, like AI. Here we can see how much I spent. So this is a screenshot taken on the something to the January, and I'd spent $24.76 on AI, and you can see it's clearly broken down into the type of use I've made, chat GPT, image generation, and the different models of AI that you talk to. Uh, so 
I recently upgraded for 20 quid to ChatGPT4 and tried to use that to generate some images using DALI built into the ChatGPT and haven't been all that successful, but certainly more successful than I was with using a tool called DALI. And here's a list of the other different tools that I've used and links to each of them so that you can go and click on them and get something done. I found the image creator from Microsoft Designer Bing was, uh, was quite fun and created quite a lot of images with those until eventually I used my AI tool where I was able to get back as a response this thing called the revised prompt. If we hover over these images, you can see the um, excerpt and then any extended stuff and the revised prompt will be in this bit, the second part. AI engine, um, right, so if I click on this particular plugin, we can see I've listed some of the things it can do. So if you happen to go into AI engine and you will find that it produces inside the paragraph block, a little icon, which enables you to do those fun that functionality. And if I'm lucky, and I click on this link and go into edit, it will start it up and enable me to sort of try to do it, or at least pretend to do it. So I hover over, and there's the little button. In fact, I've got two of them working here. So this is AI engine doing its stuff. So we can ask it to do some fairly basic things, correct the text, enhance it. And here is the AI power plugin and it can do some more stuff, but it also enables you an AI power plugin enables you to add in your own special options these ones this one's fairly standard it just produced a list now if the if the but if the link is disabled it's because you need to select something first um, as you can see ai power provides the thing for the list box block as well as the paragraph block this one doesn't so let's try again there's a bit of text selected now I should be able to do suggest synonyms. Now I don't know if this is going to work. No. Not surprising really. The back end hasn't been told that I'm using AI engine. Um, so well, one of the things I decided to do was um, I asked it to generate some CSS. So it did, and it generated some CSS to provide a red border. And so I've actually put that CSS into my special CSS block. And you'll notice that all of the images on this page have red borders. So on the on a page which documents a plugin on the right hand side is the different categories that I've reckoned it can do and you can click on the link to go and find that. There's the information about how much it costs. There's the excerpt that was written by by AI where I gave it all of the content of the post and said give us the excerpt and the SEO meta description and relate and focus key phrase and any other posts I've written about that particular plugin um, or AI has written about that particular plugin then you can see the title and the excerpt around here so this is one that Andrew suggested my cat ate my dog and this is one of the better pictures that it produced some of them you wouldn't want to share with your with pet lovers so here we can see that's what I asked it to write and this is what it's wrote oh and here down here there's a little chat bot so I wonder if this one's going to work I don't know what let's try funny No, no, because that's only pretending to work, not real, real life. Anyone ask any questions, Andrew? Uh, 
Oh, there's a response. I'll oh, respond to Colin. Yes, if you pay for chat GPT, you get to use custom GPTs. We can might have a chance to look at those as well, because there's quite a lot of them. That means these custom GPTs have been trained to do certain things in particular ways. There's an observation from Julian Golding on YouTube. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of around prompts for content writing. Right. Good. Um, there are lots of YouTube things you can watch. There's some YouTube things you can watch about uh, trying to generate consistent images. Um, and there's nice YouTube things from a man called Jamie Marsland with Poodle Press about um, about AI as well, which I which was prompted me to go and look at a number of different things as well. Now, let's move down the list. So AI engine and AI power are the two uh, biggest plugins. They both got over a million downloads. If you scroll right down to the bottom, you'll see a little table of it showing the number of different downloads with links to WordPress plugin itself and the link to their home page. And here we have AI power. Now this plugin is currently active on my site. Therefore, we might expect this chat GPT thing to work. So if I type in funny, it um, didn't do the same as chat GPT would will, will do. Now this could be because I've actually trained it to know things about this website. Well, I think I've trained it to know things about this website. It knows about the posts and the pages, but it doesn't know about is these plugins because you have to pay extra money to get that. That extra money is $7.99 a month for the pro version. Or you can hack the code and add it in yourself. Um, so AI Power uses OpenAI and DALI, and it also supports other different uh, image generating and such and such tools, but I haven't used them myself. I just used it for the OpenAI stuff. And it can do the same sort of stuff as AI Engine, but it also does uh, text-to-speech. Yep, if you want to do that. I didn't achieve that myself. And it also does this enhanced search through embedding. So let's have a go with chat pop with embedding. And now this has been trained on this website, so I should be able to ask it a question about something. So this answer here, the cost of AI can vary depending on the specific service or provider you're referring to, comes from this post here. How much is it going to cost? Some plugins and tools are completely, completely free to use. Some have trial periods. So there's the cost of ChatGPT, OpenAI, and DALI. And, it, and they measure these things in terms of tokens. And a token is about four letters of a word. Um, and it's not very much money when you um, have 1,000 tokens. But if you do lots and lots of requests, it all adds up. But then with images, it's a bit faster. So it probably costs about 10p an image. Maybe that's a bit low, that figure there. Something like that. I've generated. In my, using my AI tool, uh, 50 or 60 images so far at least. And I've had five or 600 different uh, requests to go and do things, writing excerpts and so on, writing titles for posts, that sort of stuff. So AI power can do this embedding stuff for free. You don't have to pay for it. 
and then we go through some more more plugins and um really these first two ai engine and ai power seem to be the ones that are most popular and do the most in interesting things um bertha ai it says it has a, provides a free trial and then it offers you this these credits for doing so much and you can only get five images a month or something or and then you have to uh, then start paying lots and lots of money for different things. And I didn't actually find it to be all that useful. Um, uh, AI post generator, which is in the top 10 list, it didn't work at all for me. You're supposed to get five posts a month and it didn't actually do anything because it used up the five even before it started. Uh, this one was, was a bit too old and far too expensive. And so on and so forth. And there's one here, you can even create comments for your website. I don't know why you'd want to do that rather than having someone creating a comment for real. But there you go. I, I clicked on this, had a free free comment, and I got a comment generated by somebody. Right. Oh, yes, it was on one of the posts. And apparently this person called Judith Bryant at example.com, a made up name and a made up um, web address, wrote that so that comment appears on one of my posts somewhere all uh, right and so that's the first list of 10 go on to the next list um and we start getting down to some of the some of the plugins that were recommended and there was one called altis accelerate which I heard about from Human Made. And uh, they gave a demonstration of their plugin and it provides a, a, a Altis AI generation block. And this seems quite interesting because they said uh, generate a table of um, a snooker tournament. And so it generated a WordPress table. And then he said, uh, no, change the, change the columns to put these names in rather than the, one, the random ones you've done, and so on and so forth. And I thought this is very interesting. So I started playing with it. And I ended up, I think this might be it, met playing around with charts. And that's not the one I'm looking for. But I used my, my chart block and did something. And it started telling me things about my chart which was quite interesting. But the one I was trying to find was where I had actually had had this pie chart in my thing. And I said to uh, Altus Accelerate, right, make it longer. What it did was it is it changed the content of the chart. So rather than having ABC, it now had ABCDE. And then later on, I asked it, can you accumulate the figures? And so it took the numbers one, two, and three, and it converted them into three, six, and nine, or tripled them, three, six, and nine, then it accumulated three, nine, 18. And I didn't expect it to do that. So I thought, oh, it's quite interesting what these things can do. If you ask it the right thing, it can do quite a lot of stuff. Uh, so I was able to take my a chart that I had, feed in what, in this case, I outside of this tool, feed in some data, which is in this basically a CSV format. And I said, all of these figures in column one are dates, but they're not in a proper date format. Can you change them, please, so that it shows the last date of the particular month I've typed them in there? And lo and behold, it did it. And I was able to change one of my blocks from having labels to having dates in there, which improved my output. So. I wasn't just generating content, content, I was manipulating it and saying, here's some content. I don't know what I like that. Change it to something else. And if you ask it to generate Gutenberg blocks, you go to chat GPT, it will probably do that for you. So it was very nice that the Altus Accelerate did that. Unfortunately, that plugin isn't working for me anymore. It's it's a few months old and there's something wrong with it and I haven't been able to get it to work. So you might not find any good, but this is one of the plugins that can do A-B testing. And 
I don't know anything about A-B testing, so I went here and asked AI Power to generate me some information about A-B testing, and here it listed a series of different plugins that I've never looked at. Uh, so if you want to do A-B testing, why not have a look at that? And I used its chat to do that. Well, I'm doing that. Now, as you scroll down the list of plugins, you'll find the um, the usual suspects who say they do AI. Um, Jetpack, all-in-one SEO pack, Rank Math SEO, uh, Yoast SEO, and so on. And these plugins are really annoying because Jetpack provides you 20 uses for it, for it which isn't long enough to, to find out what it can do. And then it says, right, you've got to pay for it. And then once you run out of the um, the trial period, it still offers you all the buttons to press, but they're just not, they just don't do things. They just get in your way, which is annoying. All in one SEO pack says it was the first SEO plugin to provide AI stuff. Yeah, as long as you pay for the premium version. And the same with Rank Math and Yoast SEO. You've got to buy the premium version before you can do any AI stuff. So I didn't. But I do have the premium version of Elementor and I do have the premium version of, of of Divi. And I did try both of those things and they can do things like um, generate CSS, write a bit of code, write some content for you. But you only get in Elementor, you get a free trial. But once you've used up so much of it, you then have to start paying for the plugin. And the same is true of Divi. You get a free trial, but then you have to start um, paying for it. And if you happen to be using those plugins in your WordPress development, then you might want to go for the AI version. I found an interesting use for Divi AI, which was to um, enhance an image that I had that taken many years ago. And it was a very small image. And I told it to expand it somewhat. And so, It'll be there, I suppose. Here's my picture of me cycling 15 years ago, and that was the original image of 270 pixels by 135. And there is the one which it's upscaled. So my face is a bit better, but the um, sunflowers themselves have got a bit gone a bit iffy. But it's done what I suppose it expected it to do. It looks like a better in focus image than it had before. Right, I've waffled on until five minutes to eight. I'm sure people want to ask questions. What was that last um, image uh, focus? What plugin? What did that? That, that was Divi itself. Divi. Oh. So the Divi theme can do um, image upscaling. He's done it quite well on your face, isn't it? Yeah, the face is all right, but the um, the sunflower, that sunflower there seems to have sort of looks a bit like a child's painting. I suppose you could use them in Photoshop and take out the bits that you didn't think. Well, that's the point, print. I suppose. I, d I didn't need to go into Photoshop to do that. I just said upscale it and it, it didn't do too badly, did it? No, it didn't. No. There's another image I I managed to do, which was my um my screensaver, which is a picture of a golf ball in a bunker, and I wanted it to be wider. So I went to another tool, I can't remember what it was now, and said, just fill in the blanks left and right, and it basically did. First time round, it put many more golf balls in the bunker, but eventually got it to do the right thing. Do we have pizza? <laughs> <laughs> Any more? Come on, come, come some questions. 
Can it do programming? Can it do programming? I can I can show it doing generating some CSS. So this is Elementor doing CSS. Did we see that one? Oh yes, this is a fun one. So I um I wanted it to produce some CSS so that when you hovered over the image, it went grey. So there we go. There's, well, you can't quite see it in that one because I've got some other. But, but here's an image. This is what it produced. And when you hover over the image, the image goes grey. So it wrote that CSS, which wasn't too bad. Now, a, um, Elementor says not only do I write it, but I also put it in the right place. So when it's integrated into it, but if you if you just go to chat GPT and say, write some CSS to do this, please, that's what you can get. So with my AI tool, which I've called Oik AI, the new, <laughs> because I've got my wife here, Scottish, if you didn't know that, <laughs> um, I, I say that mine can do all that as well, because all you've got to do is to and give it some content say translate it and so i've created some custom css as well i improved the formatting of that table that you see down the bottom and so i said i want to style my table which has got a class of bw plug and it wrote some css like that and it nearly improved it so here we go Yoast SEO says it provides AI, doesn't actually do it, but it has been downloaded 634 million times. What about code? I did try to get it to write some code. And I wanted it to write some code so that uh, on the home page of this website and also in blog posts, when you're looking at a particular category, it will show both posts and plugins. So that is a plugin. That is a plugin. This is a post. So all you have to do is say, you know, do something. Generate some WordPress PHP to implement a short code called AI. And here it's replied saying that is the code you'd use. And it has very simply said, in response to a, no, it doesn't. This is some code you put into your thing to say, I want to create a short code called AI. And this is the function that implements that function. And here is the function called generate AI short code. And it returns that string. So if I were to put AI into my, if I put that code into my functions PHP or in order to WordPress, plugin and ran that one by using typing an AI, it would say artificial intelligence is amazing. Very simple. And it actually just tries to explain to you what it's all about. Other times you can say generate some code, but don't give me any waffle, just, just do it for me. And it can try to do that. The code that I wanted to do was to list both the plugins and the uh, posts when you click on a particular category and it it tried its hardest. I told it what filter I wanted it to use, action hook I wanted it to use, um, but it also all it did was to change it so that the number of posts I saw on the on the page was increased through to ten or eleven or twelve, rather than actually doing what I asked it to do. So if you are a programmer, you'll find that it doesn't do a very good job. Still, I have used it a lot to generate code. If you ask the right questions, you can get code that works out of the box. Yes, and yes, Phil, and it's PHP, JavaScript, CSS, and of course, they all write in AI writes in Python and all sorts of other different languages as well. Um, do you want to see my AI tool? Can't. So uh, let's just generate an image. I don't have to fill in anything there. I just click on that button there. I want to get an image created by Dali3. And um, without any prompt, it would just come up with something of its own accord.
You have to wait a bit. DALI 3 only produces one image at a time, whereas DALI 2 used, used to be able to produce more than one, but it used to be able to, DALI 2 produce more than one rubbish image, whereas these are a bit better. They can be either natural or vivid. Well, I don't really know what the difference is. But if you wanted a picture of people having a, a bonfire by a river with birds flying around, and then mm -hmm. that's perfect, isn't it? Here's the, the different things I've done. Has it learnt the sort of pictures that you think are perfect? No. It doesn't learn anything from what you ask for. Um, so you have to keep on asking things. But if you, um, yeah, translation. So there we go. I typed in that, which was the description for one of the plugins that was look at. And no, I, something else. And it came back and said, telling me this is in Chinese and that's what it says. And I sort of believe it, don't you? You can, Anyone speak Chinese? you can do that in Google Translate. Yeah, you mm -hmm. can, yeah. But some of these plugins enable you to do it directly within your WordPress website. Is that a good good use of your WordPress website? I don't know. Um, this this routine here doesn't actually work inside WordPress. It pretends to be inside WordPress, but it isn't. It should work code. Oh, it helped me write a quiz. It helped me translate um, to a haggis for mm -hmm. Burns Supper into English rather than having to speak the Scottish version of it. What else does it do? CSS to style a select box with a larger font. There it is, select font size 20. And there it is in use on this, this thing here. More questions, please. Nobody going to say anything? We have given a huge amount of stuff. Have you? Have I? Well, why didn't you ask me a question? I don't know. Just presumably mm -hmm. when, when people watch it back, if they've caught something that they wanted, they'd be able to do it I would slowly. hope so. I hope you can go and visit the website and and find out things that I've written about it and you see if that gives you any suggestions of what you might want to do. There must be someone who's used one of the one or more of these plugins that has a has a recommendation for which one to use. I have a real life problem. Could it solve it? Uh, I don't know. I've been indexing something, so it ends up with a like a word, and then it'll say what pages it finds it on. Right, so pages might be three, four, seven, nine. 21 so. mm -hmm. and what i want to do is concatenate concurrent pages so if it says one two three four i want it just to say one to four right then carry on so could it do that uh you could probably um or alternatively <laughs> alternatively can you do it? Oh, no. I've been thinking about it during this talk, and I think it's rather difficult to program, but maybe it's not. Like that? Yeah. There you go. Convert list of numbers into a range. Have you got anything you want me to cut and paste into that? Mm. 
I can find one. How do I send it to you? Slack. How? Hmm? Into here. In Slack or in the, in the group chat? Uh, how do you put it into the group chat? Well, put it into Slack because it'd probably be easier as a direct message. Where are you going? Where? It's in Slack. Oh, I've sent it to meet up Portsmouth. Oh, that's all right. I can I can find it there. Is it? Have you pressed enter? I think so, yeah. Well, I haven't seen it. I can see it. Well, press enter. Press the other enter. It's all greyed out. The other. Is it too big or something? I don't know. Why didn't it work? Oh, it's set after I started the wrong meeting again. Are you in that place? Yeah. And you can't see it? No. Hold on. Well, the, the send button is greyed out. What does that mean? Good question. And it says your message is 31,418 characters too long. Right. Well, that would be a problem because uh, that much of data at a time feeding into these different tools, it can't, it doesn't like handling too much input and too much output unless you're using the well, right. I sent you a bit of it. Right, on. okay. Might still be too big. How much of it do you want to do, right? On. My canvas. Oh. Right, so there's your list starting there. And it goes on. Have, have you got anywhere where you can actually see the range? Right. One. I'm not sure any of them are. Uh... No. All right. Then, well, let's let's have a go. Right. Just click on send. So it's been instructed. The system message says convert the lists into numbers, and then the user message gives it actually the data. It doesn't have to have a system and user message. And if you're using a if you're using Chat GPT, then what happens is your user messages get add up. So you say do this, and it produces the wrong result. So you then say no, I want it this way. And it understands that, or tries to understand it, and then does something different. So as you can see, this is a lot harder because there's more more stuff there to do. And it may or may not produce a result, or it might just come up with an exception, and I haven't programmed against that. It doesn't word. Word documents do this for you. Well, this comes out of a Word document, but I can't find a way for it to. Oh my god! There you go. So it um ran out of memory, probably. What does it say? Failed open stream request failed. Did you ask it to write a program to do that? Well, think? it basically does that in some respects, doesn't it? It writes its own program. But it, it wouldn't have <laughs> let's give it a bit less it might have been the sorting that caused it a problem when i asked it to sort it uh sort something um it uh Depending on how I asked it, it sorted it in different ways, which is interesting. And another thing I asked it to do was a list of things with there are about 70 or 80 in them, which was the um, some keywords that you could use to Im generate images. And it said, yeah, I can do that for you. And it came back with 
with a list and it looked all right. And then I realized I've sent, I've sent you a two liner. Right. I've, well, I've done the Brazil, what Brazil, Brunei, Bulgaria there. And it's done 12 to 18, which isn't right, is it? It's done 12, 15, 17, uh, 18, and reckons that's yeah, 12 no, to 18. It's supposed to know that 16 isn't a part of it. Yeah, and 13 and 14, yeah. Yes. All right. So because it because it hasn't been trained specifically to do this task, then it can't do it properly. Try it. But then, of course, I haven't given it all that detailed instruction, have I? In current, what, what's the name for one number that's bigger than another? Con Ascent? Concurrent? No, something I don't know. Who's a mathematician here? Um, one number that's bigger than another. Yeah, con, con, con sequential. Sequential. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't have to sort them alphabetically. That's not. No, right. Well, right. Took, well, took a bit longer, but it still didn't didn't do too badly. Not bad for a first pass, but it, if you don't have your input, then you can't see that Brazil was actually it's made up some pages. It's not there. Maybe in other indexes that it's seen, it hasn't been a problem that you say it's pages 12 to 18. It may also be part of the problem that the word models aren't very good at numbers, just like image models aren't very good at spelling. Yeah. Well, that's the, one of the things I wrote down as um, successes and failures of of. of Here is a lovely picture of 36 haggises, A to Z, 0 to 9, running round a Scottish mountain clockwise. This is Burns Night. Um, as you can see, there's only 30 images. Um, they haven't got A to Z on their on their T-shirts. Which one's you? <laughs> I'm the H, that one there, I suppose. Oh, I'm HM, Herb Miller, these two. Um, so here we go. I asked it to count all the characters and it said there are 75. And then I asked it again and it said there are 68. So what can you trust? It can't spell, as we saw in images, and it can't follow clear instructions. So I was trying to find a, a word or answer where a, a, well, a series of words which only have two letters in them. And so I said, go on. Give us them, and there's its answer. Llama, snail, radar, llama, attic. So I just said try again, and it gave me five different words. It still kept giving me five, which was nice. And I told him it rubbish, and I told him mama was a, was one. And didn't come back with that one. It came back with llama again. And I never asked it why I was obsessed with llamas. Is one of the points of you doing this tonight, mm -hmm. you know my level of this, which is yeah. probably zero. Mm -hmm. Is one of your messages for people who are just thinking about poking around with it that if you you don't trust it, you, yeah, you know, don't be stupid, just play, see what happens. Yeah, right. I mean, people think that you can use use uh, these things to generate posts. You know, give it the right mm. title and it will write the right stuff, and it, and you can say set yourself off and go and write that, and it will create a rubbish website and you can for you. Professionally cut yourself off. Yeah, but if yeah. you uh, if you have a look at what's produced, as um, Julia said, you know, I I asked it to produce a post about something. It wrote some content for me, and it wrote some stuff that I hadn't wouldn't wouldn't have thought of myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it might not have been the wonderful stuff. Interesting. Right, Colin, newbie question. What the oik oik a. AI plugin uh, that you're using there. Yeah. Are you doing that from the back end of your site or, or from the I'm front end? I'm actually doing it inside my WordPress site. It's running outside of WordPress. It's actually got some piece of code in it that says, "Don't run it." I'm not running in WordPress. So are you doing it's that? It's just running inside. It's running inside my local machine, and so I'm using okay. it for. It's hard coded to write its images to a particular folder, hard coded to write its output to a particular folder. And 
I didn't want to incorporate it into WordPress because I've got so many different local WordPress environments and I just wanted to produce output I could put in any of them. Yeah. But yeah. if it was, you know, if I was to put make it available inside this thing, then yes, I would have to integrate it with WordPress, which would probably make it a bit harder in some respects because I'd have to log the output into, into a particular custom post type. Then I'd have to save the images in the in the uh, WP content uploads in a different way. Uh, right, question from Colin. I can answer that. I can try to answer the second one first. Does Dali E produce alt text automatically? Um, no, it doesn't. But it it since it produces the uh, revised prompt. From what you what you provided in the first place, it can be used as alt text. There are some plugins that will will try to use some of the stuff and save your post with the alt text in there. But I don't think it's in Dali. -E. I don't understand the first question, Colin. What was that about? What do you all do with WordPress? All right. I'm asking everybody. No, okay. Sorry. Hi. Yep. I was just, I'm new to the group, and I was just curious as to how everyone uses WordPress, what they do with that, et cetera. Um, Is it new sites mostly or other things? A variety of different things. I spend a lot of time writing rubbish like this and cataloging things. Um, but I also generate, um, I write plugins and themes. So that, that's what I'm doing, using WordPress to, to write about that. Uh, others, Andrew, for example, uh, uses it for um, his um, Fern Society, the British Fern Society. So he does that. I don't use Amazon stuff at all. And I don't display ads anymore. Okay. I've sent Colin um, a URL for one yeah. of my websites mm -hmm. in case that helps. But anyway, this is um, a bit peculiar, uh, mm. possibly. I think people build websites for all different reasons. I'll take a look at that. Right, there's a question from Vito. Can you repeat how I would train AI on the content of my website? Let's go and try and do that then. So on this website, I do have the AI Power plugin activated. So if I go to AI Power and choose the embeddings, menu item. This is where you can tell it about things. And I have told it to build an index of the posts and the pages and we can see, and and products. So here we can see that previously I've gone through and said I want to, you to index this product, which is called small blue findable tees. And it has gone through and created an index. It's, this index has been created using a service called Pinecone, which has to be configured in the settings somewhere. And I've registered with an API for Pinecone, and I've created this index called Pinecone Index, and I've told it to create an embedding model called Embedding 3 Small, and there's another one called Large, and this is the previous one called Ada, but they just changed this a couple of days ago. And, and by hand rather than automatically because I didn't set up the cron job, which is what this is about here, I've told it to index a post or a page. So if we go to all posts, we can see there's a instant embedding button there and you just click on that and you click on the post or a set of posts and say index it. Now if I'd changed it and I need to re-index it, I can go and click on that and choose instant embedding and it goes away and it sends a message off to Pinecone to say produce an embedding. Now 
and what an embedding is is some complicated numbers that it comes back with and lo and behold this is what the, the tool can use so that now knows about some ai fails and all oh, that's now been updated for those two different things uh, the way the way it knew about it was because i went to the chat and configured that as well uh, so i go to chat gpt and uh, this is where it says it's called AI power and I've changed that somewhere over in the custom text, AI power. And then I told it about context. And I said, I want to use embeddings as opposed to excerpts. And the embedding I want to use is the one that I've just set up called WP secrets. And the method of embeddings is this, I don't know what that means. Um, but they have some very useful videos to watch on their um, their documentation. And that's what I did. And then when it then produces this uh, this chat, which is configured to know about the website, and I can ask it something, then it would, should be able to tell me something about it. So um, I've also told it in some other section a bit about myself, which you won't find from the. Is that doing that? So this this is this has come out of the website and the bit where I've got got being to write my bio. See if it can tell us what our telephone number is. Cool. And that information I gave it. By embedding. That well, it seems to disappear. What I gave it through there. Does that answer it at all? Rito? Yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah, so uh, go and watch. I, I only did that two days ago um, and I wasn't sure how successful it would be and I think it was quite good. Um, I don't know how you enhance a search. So you went to, the, I don't know what you could do on a search page. You know, you said someone's done a search can you get it to produce the answers there rather than going through the chat? That might be a bit harder, but if you went to the search and it gave you a 404 or something like that, maybe you could put the chat in there and say, you know, I didn't find what you're looking for. Why don't you ask me a question? So, sorry, and you you uh, select a certain post, but can you select the entire database of posts? Well, yes, you can. If you if you configure it so that it runs through, um, runs with a cron job, to run rather okay than, it doesn't use the wordpress cron it, it wants to run as a, a aix cron or linux cron then then you can set it to do the whole thing but i was using a manual embedding for that yeah okay thank you right well it's a 25 past eight and then and we come to the end of the meeting really i'm just going to go through a little bit of the uh, standard housekeeping stuff, if I can find it. Is that you winding up? Yeah. Well, that was interesting. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Hold on. Slides, mm -hmm. slides, slides. You're going? I was going to, I thought you were yeah. finished. Yeah, I'm finished now, the housekeeping stuff. Um, Herb, I have a question. Yeah. We may need some people, some WordPress work done um, to do with document management systems. We found some document management plugins 
and I'd wondered if anyone around had actually integrated them or used them. Someone what happens? We, we found about four or five. All right. Have um, you? Sorry. Have on. you signed up for the um, the WordPress UK Slack channel? No, I it, I, I will. Right, because if you do that, you could ask that in a general question in the um, in the general thing, and there be, might be some people who've used them who can give you recommendations. WordPress UK. Otherwise, Slack. we'll have the um, well, we'll have this video recording, so anyone watching it might be able to help. Okay. Right, so there were the questions you asked, some of them, um, and now we come to the end bit. So uh, apparently the global community sponsors have changed since last year, and they're now GoDaddy, Bluehost, Automatic, Woo, not WooCommerce, they just call themselves Woo, and WP Beginner. And they're the global sponsors for WordCamps and so on. We have now reached 600 Meetup members since there were 40 more people who signed up for today's session. There are 751 groups in 108 countries of WordPress with over half a million people who members. But in the last couple of years, at least three of the different group local groups have uh, stopped being on Meetup, which is a shame. Here's our stats, which you can find on the website, wppom.org.uk. Uh, if you haven't seen it, you might, might want to watch the video of Matt Munnenweg on the State of the Word 2023. There's a link to that in WordPress.org. Yesterday was WordPress 6.4.3 and it was released. I haven't installed it myself, but it contains a fix to a bug that I raised. Ooh. So I'll be ple I'm pleased with that. Um, and yesterday at Brighton, they had a, an in-person meetup, which was a social event as a sort of New Year's meeting. End of the month, but never mind. If you want some more about WordPress and AI, then you can go to the WordPress Cambridge meetup on the 12th of February, which is Monday evening. And that's a that's a nice meetup. They um people all get together and have a good old chat about things. It isn't it isn't like me just talking and boring the pants off you all. It's a it's a interesting discussions. Uh, some people know nothing and other people know an awful lot. And then our future plans for WordPress is WordPress 6.5 will come out in March, 6.6 .6 in July, and 6.7 in November. As I said, visit these slides and click on the links and it will take you to where you want to go. Um, full site editing, if you're in, anyone's interested in that, there's now 588 full site editing themes, which is a hell of a lot more than there were a couple of months ago. And I haven't quite finished working out how many style variations there are. Last year, we had, was that 10, nine different meetings, one of which was in person, which was the WordPress 20th anniversary quiz. So far this year, we've had one meeting, and I think maybe we should have another quiz for WordPress and its 21st anniversary, which we have in a, in a local pub in Portsmouth and Gunwolf Keys. So anyone who's a local resident can come along to that. Otherwise, I've got nothing in the plan yet, but I'm sure we'll come up with something. And here we go. The most interesting of these things is 9.91 billion plugin downloads in total uh, from WordPress.org. And sometime this month, round about the 8th, I, I estimate that that will reach 10 billion total downloads. Thank you of which WordPress SEO is 630 million, so it's quite a lot, my percentage. And if you wonder what these funny things are, if any of you see anything on your phone or anywhere else which you're using, such as Spark icons, it's all because everyone's decided that's the thing you should use for AI. And I asked AI, how many Spark icons are there? And it said hmm, 35,000 or so. So, um, I'm sure you can find one you like. And there you go. I'd like to thank our sponsors who don't really sponsor us anymore, but I still thank them every month. And that is it. And I am going to find the button to stop the recording. No, I'm not. Did you stop? Over there. All right, it's after that at the bottom.